بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد continuing from our previous class discussing the issue of that great act of worship that great act of worship of the heart that if one were to perform it then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will suffice him in all of his affairs Allah azza wa jalla will suffice him in the affairs of his deen and will suffice him in the affairs of his dunya and this life and in the hereafter the great action of at-tawakkul and putting one's trust and faith and reliance and dependence upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to achieve one's goals to achieve one's goals in his deen and likewise in this life and in the hereafter having true sincere reliance and trust and hope in Allah azza wa jal to protect him and to aid him and facilitate him and to direct him to that which is good all the while while taking the means that are legislated taking the means that are legislated that Allah has allowed for one to take to achieve one's goals <clears throat> this is the tawakkul that is uh, praiseworthy and is a great act of worship if we remember there was a supplication the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would make before he left his home indicating uh, the the sunnah of the prophet with regards to tawakkul that whenever he would go out of his house he would leave in this manner remembering Allah azza wa jalla and, and putting his dependence and trust and faith and reliance upon Allah azza wa jalla to take care of his affairs whenever he goes out through the land who can remember that supplication Dua khuruj al khuruj min al bayt Ayo bismillah tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah bismillah tawakkaltu ala Allah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah who else knows the supplication? Now. Bismillah. Who else? Review. Maraja. Now. Sent. Uh huh. Who wants to learn it? Ah, Bismillah. We all we all we all know this one, huh? Whoever doesn't know it, it's okay. Don't be shy. We're here to learn together, to review together. If we already know it, we review it and listen to the good, inshaAllah. Nam and help and aid one another. Taawanu al birri wa taqwa. هذا من أعظم التعاون. التعاون على دين الله سبحانه وتعالى ومتابعة السنة وتعليم الناس الخير. الحمد لله. Bismillah. The first thing. Bismillah. Bismillah. Naam, what does that mean? With, with the name of Allah, in the name of Allah. What does that mean though? Aristiyana, Aristiyana, Bismillah. Bismillah, meaning what, I begin with the name of Allah, my action, whatever I'm doing. When I'm here, leaving the house. Leaving the house, remembering the name of Allah Azza wa Jalla as I'm leaving. For what? Why am I remembering the name of Allah? Uh, whenever I'm leaving, whenever the believer is leaving the house, why does he remember? Why does he say Bismillah? What does he want? Ah, uh, he wants help. Now he wants help, particularly with this word here, Bismillah. The word uh, for protection is going to come. And he included any the understanding, but you know, there's a specific supplication for protection. It's going to come. The author he mentioned Al Istiada. Now and also there's Istiada when leaving the house too. Now I'm a supplication for that. We learn one at a time. Bismillah. The, the ulama, they mentioned that this means that a believer, he says, uh, the beginning his action with the name of Allah, wanting two things. Wanting two things. The aid of Allah Azza wa Jal first, by, and this is understood in the ba' al ba' huna ba' isti'ana. And then also by beginning with Allah's name first, seeking the blessing. Tabarruk bi al bad'i bismillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek the Allah's blessing. So one, he seeks Allah's aid and blessing. 
whatever he's doing, whatever he says, Bismillah, he, he's hoping at that time when he says that, he's saying, he's saying it for a reason. He has an intention behind these words. He wants Allah to help him. And he wants Allah to bless his action and his deed. This is what, and this is, this is what that means. So then a believer, he has to recall that and, and, and remember that at the time of saying Bismillah, he's not just moving his tongue, rather he's moving his heart too. He's moving his heart too, hoping that Allah will help him and hoping that Allah will bless him. And knowing that if Allah does not help him, then he will be a failure. And if Allah does not put blessing in his deed, then he will never have any good. So then he will surrender and submit himself in this manner. Bismillah. Huh? Then after that, even reaffirming the issue of seeking aid and assistance, tawakkaltu ala Allah. Tawakkaltu ala Allah. There's just a few words. Or maybe a, a person can memorize it right now. Bismillah. Everybody knows that part. Huh? Sa? Tawakkaltu. Allah, tawakkaltu ala Allahi, tawakkaltu ala Allah. I put my trust and my reliance, my faith, my dependence upon Allah, not upon myself. Not upon myself. I put all my faith, all my hope, all my dependence and reliance for, for to obtain what I want to obtain, to, to, to have what I want to have, what I'm going to seek. I'm putting all that and entrusting it to Allah alone. Who al Wakil? From his names, Al Wakil, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nam al Wakil. That he is the one who takes and disposes of the affairs of his believers. So a believer, he puts in his heart, his, he trusts he trust in Allah. Azawajal. He put his reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then again, to uh, reinform that, why, why, to, re, to reaffirm that, why, why is he doing that? لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. So the, then a person would be out of his mind to not put his trust upon Allah. He would be out of his mind to not put his trust upon Allah Azza wa Jalla. There's no mal, there's no power, or there's no might, there's no ability to move from one state to another state, to go from good to better, or from bad to worse, or any change in life, except by the power and the might of Allah Azza wa Jalla and His permission. So then he says, Bismillah, putting his hoping, hoping for Allah's help, hoping for Allah's blessing. La tawakkal tu ala Allah bismillah tawakkal tu ala Allah I put my trust and my hope and my faith and my dependence and reliance upon Allah alone wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah and there's no power or might whatsoever for me to do any good or to obtain my goal except with Allah azza wa jalla these three words, I think, only from these three words, what would be new for uh, one of the brothers maybe would be tawakkal tu ala Allah as for bismillah then we all know that. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Then majority of the believers have memorized this likewise. So then we just add one word to it in order, and that is توكل تو على الله. Whoever didn't know that word now, he pay attention. توكل تو على الله. So then we say بسم الله توكل تو على الله. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Whenever the person he leaves his house, that's what he says. When he goes outside to go to work, that's what he says. Whenever he leaves to go to the masjid, that's what he says. Whenever he goes out of his home and he wants to go to the market, that's what he says. If he's going to go for a walk through the neighborhood, that's what he says. Whenever he leaves his home, he says this. How does he say it? With his tongue and with his heart. How we should be cautious not to let these supplications and these athkar or just be simple lip service. Something that somebody mentions with his tongue. Although if a person, he did say it, Alhamdulillah, Allah is at kareem And he'll reward him for even pronouncing and remembering his name with the tongue. But this is not the intent. And, and the true, uh, the true uh, benefit from these adhkar is whenever one says it with his heart as well. And his conscious of what he's saying. And he knows what he's saying. And then his heart is moving, hoping for what he's speaking about. And he calling, he said, this, is a, this is a dua. This is adhkar, it's also a supplication. And he's, he's invoking Allah Azza wa Jal. Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. You memorize it now? Let me hear it. Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Ahsant, ahsant. Naam, so this is what you do. You have to ask Allah to help you. And then you memorize as fast as you can. You start working. Allah has already helped you. Memorize it in less than five minutes. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. Tawakkaltu ala Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Now a believer, he has to also ask Allah to help him to say that whenever he leaves his home. Many of us, we learn the adhkar and then we do not use them. We learn the adhkar, we memorize them, and we, and we know some of these 
things and then we forget to say them in their proper times and their proper places. But we have to strive. We, we learn that and now when we leave the house we say that. And we, and, we, and we fortify our soul in this manner by the permission of Allah. These are from the means that a believer he takes to protect himself. There are harms in this life that we cannot see. And everybody confesses to that in these days and they call one of them a harm harms corona. Before that there's other harms that we cannot see like shayateen. The one who, the shayateen and the jinn, we cannot see them and they are our enemies and they want to harm us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a reminder we've seen in the hadith yesterday that whoever says this when he leaves out of his house tatanaha anhu shayateen. Wa qala lahu shaytan wa qala lahum shaytanun uh, uh, before that it said about him in uh, yuqalu hina idhin the person who says that, it will be said that he's been guided and he's been sufficed and uh, he's been protected. He's been protected. So then the shaitan, they, they back away from him and one of them will say, then what, what, what are we going to do to somebody who has been guided and who has been sufficed and who has been protected? And these are from the means to protect uh, ourselves. Uh, a believer, he protects himself from the unseen, from the evils of the unseen. There are evils that we can see and there are evils that we cannot see. And this is from the means to protect oneself from them. is by uh, remembering Allah Azza wa and putting one's dependence and trust and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, Sheikh Abdul Razak, uh, wa ta'ala, he just recently, in these last few days, he has written a small pamphlet uh, about uh, 10 advices, Ashru Wasaya, uh, uh, how to protect al biqaya min al bala there's 10 advices on how to protect oneself from this, this disease. And even one that's spreading, that's known, corona. And uh, from those means he mentioned, uh, he, he mentioned this supplication. And whenever he leaves his, his home, he makes the supplication. He makes the supplication. And he, so, so a believer, he learns these supplications and he calls on Allah. He knows Allah by them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we, if we know Him in times of ease, then He will help us in times of hardship. Naam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تَعَرَّفِ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَائِ فِي الرَّخَائِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِدَّةِ That if you need to know Allah Azza wa Jal by worshipping Him, and by obeying Him, and by calling on Him, and by invoking Him, and by hoping in Him, Naam, and, and, and by complying to His commandments, well, in a time of ease, and He will help you and aid you in a time uh, of hardship, in a time of hardship. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a tawakul. The point the author he wants to make here whenever he mentioned wa dalilu tawakul and the point and the purpose of this is to establish that it's ibadah so that the believers will be upon clarity that this is the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. Qawluhu ta'ala wa ala Allahi fatawakkalu in kuntum mu'minin. Naam. So this is the first verse he used as a proof that tawakul is ibadah. How is this verse a proof that tawakul is ibadah? Wa ala Allahi fatawakkalu. And put your trust upon Allah if you are truly believers. In another verse, he says also, And whoever relies or has tawakkul upon Allah, then he will suffice him. The author, he mentioned these verses to clarify that this is ibadah. So, where is the shahid from that? How are these verses proof that this is ibadah? Tawakkul is ibadah. Wa dalilu kawluhu ta'ala. And that's what he's saying. This is a tawakul ibadah. What dalil? Qawluhu ta'ala. If we remember, Hafidhullah uh, if we remember the definition of Shaykh al Islam for ibadah, from here it will be easy to understand these proofs. What is the definition of ibadah? Shaykh al Islam, he mentioned that concise term, uh, ibadah. What does it mean? Aha, uh-huh. ewa. From? From the, the heart, the from, from speech. Everything that Allah is a concise term, including everything that Allah loves and is pleased with, from speech and from action, outwardly and inwardly. Outwardly and inwardly. Ismun jami'un likulli ma yuhibbuhu Allahu wa yardahu min al aqwali wal amali al wahira wal baathina. This is ibadah. Everything that Allah loves and is pleased with, from speech and action. Whether it's outward or inward, any of the heart, or whether it's hidden, or whether it's apparent. Tayyib. So how do we know if something is beloved to Allah, or if He likes it? What, is our, what are the signs that Allah loves something, or, he, or he, He's pleased with it? Ismun jami'un li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allahu wa yardahu. 
How can we know if, if it's from what Allah loves? I and mean, this is a general term, and a concise term. Ibadah includes everything Allah loves and is pleased with. If it's legislated. Ahsan, how do we know if it's legislated? Ah, uh, It's in the Sunnah, but any clear. If Allah commands it, if Allah commands it, now it's legislated. If Allah commands it, or He encourages it, now it's legislated. So it's something that if Allah commands an action, it's ibadah. Now it's ibadah. How, does it, how do we know if Allah loves an action or a statement, Allah will command it? Huh? Naam, so then if Allah commanded it, that means He loves it. And that means He's pleased with that deed. And likewise, if Allah prohibited it, an action or a statement, to leave off that action, seeking His pleasure and reward, this is an act of worship likewise, to leave off. And also from the ways to know if something is uh, beloved to Allah, and the meaning of it, is it ibadah? If we know that it's beloved to Allah, that, that, now that means that it's ibadah. Naam, if it's pleasing to Allah to perform it, that means it is Ibadah. Also, if Allah praises a person for this action or for this statement, they're, they're pra- they're praised, if they're praised for it, Allah praises a person because of a particular trait they have. That trait is ibadah. Allah loves that trait because that, he, pra- he praised that person and that trait and he for, the, for that reason. So these are from the, the means that we know that the action is ibadah. Allah will command it. Either an obligatory command or a preferred command, a recommended command likewise is included. It's ibadah. And also, or Allah will praise a person, a praise or a praise a person, yani while he's performing a particular deed or action, yani that that trait that they have, this also is ibadah. So here, Allah He says, "Wa ala Allahi fa tawakkalu in kuntum mu'minin." Now, what kind of verb is that? Tawakkalu. Who knows sarf? Who learned something from sarf? Ah, tawakkala ya tawakkalu. Ah, tawakkal. Tafa'ala ya tafa'alu. The command? Tafa'al. Ah, antum tafa'alu. Antum tawakkalu. That's a command. That's a command. Allah commanded people to have tawakkul. Naam? And then even made a condition if you're believers. In kuntum mu'mineen. If you're believers. So here Allah command tawakkul, so it's ibadah. Naam? Wa maya tawakkal ala Allahi fa huwa hasbuh. Whoever put his trust upon Allah, Allah will suffice him. Uh, here Allah is, this is encouragement also. Allah is encouraging this deed. That means that Allah loves it. That means it's ibadah. So the point of the author is clear. وَدَلِيلُ تَوَكُلْ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى نَعَمْ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ وَقَوْلُهُ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ إِذَنْ التَوَكُلْ عِبَادَةً Ibadatun Alima is it's ibad, it's established. So that means that it must be for Allah alone. This is the right of Allah alone. And uh, there's a difference between a tawakkul and what tawkil. There's a difference between a tawakkul and tawkil. Tawkil is whenever somebody will entrust somebody else to perform something for them. And he, from the affairs of the dunya. For example, somebody maybe wants something from the store. And he will give somebody some money. And this is called tawkil. He'll tell him, I want this item and that item and that item. Here's the money. And he will go get that for him. This is permissible. This is permissible. This is allowed. Naam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of his companions, uh, he allowed him uh, to, he gave him some, some money, and he went and bought a sheep. He came back with two. Naam, uh, Amr al-Bariq, al-Bariqi, if I remember his name correctly, radiyallahu anhu. In any case, this is established in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he would make tawkeel, and he would uh, give uh, other people and, uh, some, some of it to, to, to do something for him, from buying and trading. And from taking care of uh, from the affairs of the dunya, or even sometimes slaughtering, he had made tawkil for Ali, radiallahu anhu, to slaughter for him on his behalf. So this is permissible, but a person will not say he will say any wakal to fulanan, or even for example in marriage, it's permissible. Also, the Prophet sallallahu he had uh, uh, given uh, tawkil for for somebody to ask the hand of a woman for him. And the life side, this is permissible for the for the the, the wali to make tawkil or for the the, the 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 groom, the man to give the right to somebody else to ask for him, you know, to go ask for for him that for my marriage or to stand in him for him, for the contract signing. So all of this is called tawkil or wakala. This is permissible. 
But the one who does that, who yuwakil, he will yuwakilu furanin, wala yatawakkalu illa ala Allah. He will entrust somebody else to take care of the business for him, and then he'll put his faith and trust in and Allah Azza wa Jal, that it will happen. Now that it will happen. And he will use wisdom, and he will take, for example, he want to give somebody, uh, he needs something to be taken care of, and it's important, and then he will select somebody who is suitable for the job. He will select somebody who is responsible, somebody who is upright to take care of it for him, and then he will let him take care of the job and give him the tawkil and the wakala, and then after that he'll put his faith and trust in Allah Azza wa Jalla that that man will do what he's supposed to do. He's not relying on that man, he's relying on Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is the means that's legislated. Now, but anyways, the ulama they say, he wouldn't say, tawakiltu ala furan. You say, wakiltu furan, meaning that you have made him a wakil for you to take care of some business for you. This is. This is permissible. This is permissible. As for the trust and the reliance that the, uh, the affair will be taken care of and it will be handled properly, then this uh, believer, he relies only upon Allah Azza wa Jal uh, for this to uh, be completed for him. Now, it's clear. طيب the author, he says, وَدَلِلُ الرَّغْبَةِ وَالرَّهْبَةِ وَالْخُشُوعِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا بِسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ the author, he mentioned now the evidence for Ar-Ragba, Ar-Rahba, wal khushur The evidence for Ar-Ragba, Ar-Ragba is similar to Ar-Raja, it's similar to hope, but also it's along with the Talab, that he desires and he wants something. He has Ragba fihi, that he, that he desires it, he hopes for it, he wants it. His heart is desiring it and hoping to obtain it. Now, but the one who has the ragba that is strong, he will take the means to obtain that. And the one he will, if, it's, if the ragba is strong, then he will take the means to get what he hopes for. And if the, so the, the ulama, they mentioned that the ragba is yani, talabu shay. Talabu shay al-mahmood, a person, he will seek that thing. He wants it with his heart. His heart desires it and wants it and hopes for it. Now, so it's similar to ar-raja. It's similar to ar-raja. Now, even uh, this is ar ragba the ulama, they mentioned this is the foundation of knowledge. If a person, he hopes to have knowledge, what is the first thing he has to have? ar ragba Aslu al-ilmi ar ragba wa thamaratuhu al-sa'adatu. The ulama, they say, Aslu al-ilmi ar ragba wa thamaratuhu al-sa'adah. The foundation uh, of knowledge is ar ragba The person, he has desire. He has fervent desire and, 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 and he wants to know. He wants to learn. This ragba carries him to seek knowledge. And the result of that is that he will have, he will have bliss and, and, and happiness. The one who learns the knowledge for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla in order to apply it and draw near to Allah, then this will be his success and a means for his Savior. Naam, that Allah has made the path of seeking knowledge the means to success. Naam, there are proof for that? Hadith Abi Hurairah. رضي الله عنه من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة that whoever sets out on a path to seek knowledge then Allah will make easy for him the path to to paradise to Jannah even knowledge is the path to paradise نعم the one that has the good intention نعم but the foundation of knowledge a person has رغبة this is any the رغبة he's talking about here رغبة that he has desire and he, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla in his heart, and he wants to know, he wants to learn how to worship Allah, he wants to know his Lord, he wants to know his deen, he does not want to be ignorant anymore. Nam he has ragba in his heart. Nam this is what the worship, act, act of worship here is similar to ar raja And ar rahba is also like a, it's a synonym for al khawf, for khawf, another meaning of fear. Nam Allah Azza wa Jalla, he says, wa iyaya farhabun, and he khafuni, and wa iyaya farhabun, fear me. Naam, and also in uh, Ar-Ragba, فَإِذَا فَرَقْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ فَرْغَبْ And he has a desire and he stand to, to, to worship Allah Azza wa Jalla with hope uh, and, and to hope for His mercy and for His, his, his uh, acceptance, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْخُشُّوعِ الْخُشُّوعِ The ulama they mentioned هُوَ حُضُورُ الْقَلْبِ وَقْتَ تَلَبُّسِهِ بِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ that's uh, the definition of uh, Al-Imam Masidi, rahimahullah ta'ala, al-khushu' humbleness or submissiveness, humility. He says it's hudur al-qalb, waqt talabusihi bata'atillahi, wa sukun al-zahiri wa al That uh, at the time of performing the act of worship, then his heart is present. This is called khushu'. 
This is called khushu at the time of performing the act of worship, like salat, for example, or charity, or hajj, or seeking knowledge, or teaching, or learning, or memorizing, or reciting the Qur'an. Whatever the act of worship is, while one performs that, if his heart is present, and his heart is present, remembering Allah Azawajal at that time, then this is called khushur. And if that is, happens in the heart, then the body will follow. So then he mentioned likewise with sukun, that the inside and the outside will be tranquil and be peaceful. Be tranquil and be peaceful. So the, the, the khushur, this is the, the, the soul of the worship. I mean, that a person, he will be uh, present in his mind, in his heart, will be aware of what he is doing whenever he worships Allah. What, if he's worshiping with his tongue, then he, kn- he knows what he's saying. If he's worshiping when he's in ruku', he knows he's bowing before Allah, the Lord of the worlds. If he's in sujood, he's praising the Most High. Humbling himself, making himself low before the one who is the highest and the greatest, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He remembers these things. This is called khushur. In his heart, he has submissiveness and humbleness in his present, in his mind. Now, this is all worship. And the author, he says, and the proof that all three of these actions are worship, qawluhu ta'ala, that the meaning of which is, verily, they used to, and this is in Surah Anbiya, before this, there was a mention of many of the prophets. And then Allah, Azza wa Jalla, he mentioned them, about them, and the prophets and the righteous. How, how did they worship Allah, Azza wa Jalla? إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَانِ They used to hasten to do good deeds. الْمُسَارَعَ فِي الْخَيْرِ نَا وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And hasten. Hasten to the goodness uh, uh, and to the, to the mercy of your Lord. So the, the prophets and the righteous that were upon their way, in the, uh, the way of the prophets and messengers, alayhim salatu wassalam, how did they worship? One description, كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَانِ That they would hasten to do good. Meaning that they would hasten to strive to do the good in the, in, in the best time. Whatever the, if the good was uh, restricted to a time, that good deed, they tried to do it at the best time. If that deed was restricted to a place, they would try to do it in the best place. They would hasten to do the action in the best time, in the best place. If the deed that they're performing has uh, conditions and pillars, then they would hasten to learn them and to perform them per- precisely and properly, fulfilling the, 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 the worship in the best manner, hastening to, to do good. Not upon ignorance, upon knowledge. Hastening to, the, to do the good means they need to learn the, how to do it properly and to, to do it in its most virtuous time and to do it in its most virtuous place and to perform the action in the complete manner, the manner that is legislated. Along with that, Allahu Akbar. And they used to call on us with hope and with fear. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah wa ta'ala He mentioned Raghaban fi ma'ind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hoping for what is with Allah azza wa jal From his mercy Wa, wa rahaban uh, min ma'indana Min al-dhunub And fearing what we have from sins They call on Allah azza wa jal How do they invoke Allah? Hoping for his mercy Fearing their sins Hoping for their mercy Fearing for his punishment Fearing from his punishment Hoping for the mercy of Allah azza wa jal Fearing the punishment These are from those pillars of ibadah And what? Muharrakat, muharrakat al kulub and hoping and fearing. This is how the Anbiya, they worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And they were kanu lana khashi'in, and they were submissive and humble uh, before us. Okay, how is this verse here? A proof that all of these evidence, uh, the raghba and rahba and khushur is ibadah. The, the point of the author to mention this verse is to, to clarify that these actions are ibadah. And this verse here is a proof for that. What's the aspect of that proof? إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَحَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ Allah praised them for that. Allah praised them. Allah is praising them for this trait. كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ Allah is praising them. وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَحَبًا And they're calling on us. Also this is a proof for du'a. Nam could be a proof for du'a as well. يَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَحَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِئِينَ Allah is praising them for these traits. Allah mentioned these great uh, prophets and messengers that have preceded in the the verses before this, and then He praised them for these traits. These traits that they have, they're praiseworthy. And that means that Allah loves these praised, loves these traits. That means that this is ibadah. Do you understand the proof of the author? Nam? Because whatever, what is ibadah? Everything Allah loves and is pleased with. 
from speech and action, outward and inward. How do you how do we know if Allah loves it and is pleased with it? If He commands it, or if He praises it, Naam? like this, if He commands it or if He praises it, these are the ways uh, to know that it's it's beloved to Allah Azza wa Jalla. He orders it or He praises the one who does it in, in this manner or encourages it. Likewise, this is all an indication that this is an action that's beloved to Allah. If it's affirmed it's an action that's beloved to Allah, then now it's affirmed that it is ibadah. If it's affirmed that it is ibadah, then now it must be for Allah alone. Because ibadah is the right of Allah. Is the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. Naam? The hadith of Mu'ad. Who knows the hadith of Mu'ad? The right of Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh-huh. The right of Allah is to worship Him alone. And if you do that, the right that Allah allows you to you have on him, then he won't punish you. Ahsent. The, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told Mu'ad, that tadri ma haqa Allahi ala libad, wa haqul ibadi ala Allah. Do you know the right of Allah upon the servants and the right of the servants upon Allah? He said, Allah and His Messenger know best. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, inna haqa Allahi ala libad, an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shay'a. That the, the, the right of Allah upon the servants is that they worship Him alone and do not associate any partners with Him whatsoever. That's the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. So now that, okay, tawakkul is ibadah. That's the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ar-raghba is ibadah. That's the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ar-rahba wa al-khushu' is ibadah. This is the right of Allah. Uh, before the raja with dua, that's the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the point here. This is the right. This must be for Allah alone. And these particular acts of worship, we find that many of the people in the ummah, they have been tried by them in his time until today. Particularly those people who are attached to the graves. That they call on the graves. They call on them with hope, and, and even we've seen they call it, they're afraid of them, likewise, that they will harm them. And they slaughter for them. He mentioned slaughtering, it's going to come. All of this is act, and they take oaths for them and the, and the graves. And he mentioned all of these, and, they, and, 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 and the likes like this. And some of them, they'll call on the grave. Medid, medid, ya fulan. Ya Sayyidu fulan, medid, medid. Aghithni. They call out, save me, help me. If you don't help me, who will help me? They will say words like this. Medid, and he said, provide for me. They will call on them if they can't have a child or if their child is sick. Sometimes they will go to the grave and call on the grave. Or even they'll be far from the grave. And some of them are so afraid and attached to them, they'll call on them even from a distance. And they're dead. And they're dead. This is, these are the rights. This is the right of Allah. Is what this is, that's the point of the author to clarify for the ummah. This is the right of Allah. Is what these people who do this, they have left Islam. Yadim billah. The one who does this and calls on other than Allah, he hopes and he's afraid. This type of fear, other than Allah Azza wa Jal, this one he has left the 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 the, the fold of Islam. Hayyadin billah, because that's the right of Allah. Naam and 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 in haq Allah al ibadi and yabuduhu wa la yushriku bihi shayya. When in haq al ibadi al Allah, Allah yuadziba man la yushriku bihi shayya. And the right of Allah of the servants upon Allah is that He will not punish the one who does not associate partners with Him. Who does not associate partners with him. Naam, so these are all, all this to clarify this is the right of Allah. This is from knowing Allah. From knowing Allah, after knowing that he's the Rabbul Alameen, is to know his right. The author here, this is all tied in for this aspect here. The only one who deserves to be worshipped. Wadalilu al Khashya. He says now, Wadalilu Khashyati, Kawluhu Ta'ala, Fala Takshohum Wakshoni. فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِي Do not fear them, the statement of Allah the Most High. Do not fear them, but, uh, but fear me. Do not fear them, but fear me. This, is, uh, this verse here is a proof that khashya is ibadah. How is that? Don't fear them. وَخْشَوْنِي It's a command. Fear me. So Allah commanded khashya. So now khashya is clearly ibadah. Because Allah only commands the servants to do that which He is pleased with and that which He loves. And that which he please, is pleased with and that which he loves is called? Ibadah. It's called worship. Ibadah. Naam. So this is clearly Ibadah. What is khashya? It's a heart. It's a fear. It's a Ibadah khalbiya. Sah. It's fear. Naam. Some uh, the ulama they mentioned is the meaning of khawf. But some, uh, some ulama they went to detail and mentioned that the khashya is khawf but it's a more specific type of khawf. And it's a khawf uh, al-maqroon uh, with knowledge, with knowledge, this type of uh, this type of fear is a more specific type of fear, uh, awe, and a, a fear that is uh, coupled with with uh, magnification and glorification. Al khawf al makroon bi bil ma'rifa wa ta'zim, with magnification and is based upon knowledge. 
The one who knows Allah Azza wa Jal, he fears him even more. The one, the more the person he has knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, the more he will fear him. And it's what they mentioned, and كلما كان العبد أعلم بالله كان أو أعرف بالله كان كان أخ أخوف لله سبحانه وتعالى وكلما كان أخوف منه سبحانه وتعالى كان أطلب لعبادته وأبعد عن معصي. That whenever a person he the more knowledge he has of Allah, the more he fears Allah. And the more he fears Allah, the more he worships Allah. Allahu Akbar. There's something there. The more he fears Allah, the more he worships Allah. Whenever he worships Allah, what are you trying to do when you worship Allah? What, what does a believer want from worship? To, huh? to please to, to get close to Allah. To please Allah. Sah, to get close to Allah. Al-ibadi, from, from the terms the ulama they use for the word ibadah, al-qurba. Al-qurba. Al-qurba is something that draws a person near to something. So ibadah, qurba. As-salat, qurba. Seeking knowledge, qurba. Reciting the Quran, qurba. Qurbatun, min qurab. Al-qurab alati tukharribu al-abda min rabbihi. These are actions that draw the servant near to Allah. But we pay attention. The one, the more he knows Allah, the more he fears Allah. The more he fears Allah, the more he draws near to Allah. It's not like the fear of the creation. When somebody fears, for example, uh, a storm, what does he do? Draw close to it? Somebody he fears a snake, what does he do? Get close to it? Somebody is afraid of a fire, what does he do? يتقرب? لا, يبتعد. He gets away from it. He gets away from it. But Allah Azza wa Jal, هو رب العالمين. هو رب العالمين. He doesn't get away from him. If he fears him, the more he fears him, the more he wants to be near him. Allah. The more he fears him, the more he wants to be near him. The more he knows Allah, the more he's afraid of Allah, the more he's afraid of him, the closer he wants to be to him. Because he also knows that although he is powerful and strong and severe in punishment, also he is merciful and kind and loving. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-wadud, al-rahim, ra'uf, ra'ufun bi'ibadihi, nam al-ghafur, tawwab, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more the believer knows Allah, the more afraid he is of him. And whenever he's afraid of him, the more afraid he is of him, the more he will worship him. The more he will worship him. There's a, a beautiful verse in the Quran that help us understand this this issue. And uh, the last edge that uh, that's in the last edge that that's not what I'm looking for. This is clarify the issue that we're that we're talking about. What we want to talk about now, that once we one fears Allah, he wants to draw near to Allah. فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنِّي لَكُمْ مِنْ هُنَّ ذِيرُ مُبِينَ Now this is what the Prophet ﷺ was commanded to say. This is what we revealed to the Prophet say. He commanded the people, فِرُّوا فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Flee to Allah. Flee to Allah. Not from Allah. Uh, not from Allah. Flee to Allah. Not from Allah. Rather those people who flee from Allah, what does Allah say about them? فَعِنَ تَذْهَبُونَ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرُ الْعَالَمِ Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going to flee to? Where can you run to? Where can you hide? There's nowhere. There's nowhere to go except to Allah Azza wa Jal. And in the, in the end, wa ilayhi turja'un. And in wa ilayhi turja'un, you're going to go back to Him. So in this life, what is the way out? What is the what is the safe and secure way? Al firar ila Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to flee to Allah Azza wa Jal. To flee to Allah Azza wa Jal. And He said, Subhana about His Prophet, Inni lakum. Minhu Nadirul Mubin, that I am a verily a clear warner for you from him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he came to his companions and he told them and asked them if they believe him, or even before that to his people. And he made the example, the example of what I have come with. The example of me and what I have come with is like a warner who warned his people. He was on the horizon and he seen an enemy coming. And he came back to his people and he warned them. And so those who took his warning and believed in him and they left and they followed his command, they were safe. And those who did not uh, pay attention to his warning, they were destroyed. The army destroyed them. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ana nadir al uryan Ana al nadir al uryan In the time of the, uh, of the Prophet ﷺ, they didn't have communication. 
But what they would have, they would have watchers and they'd have people on the outskirts. But if there was a great army or some great danger coming, the one way that they would communicate to the people in the, in the, in the cities and, and the villages and the lands with them, they would take off their clothes and, 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 and run with no clothes on to warn them. He would take his stove off and he would warn them. They called him a nadir al Oryan. The bear warner, and he, the naked warner, and he is it's so serious. He, the only way he can warn his people that he would they would take the clothing off. This is one of their ways that they would do in jahiriya, that they would take their clothing off and run with their thobe because they can't hear them, but they see them. They see the man running with no thobe on. They know there's danger coming, and they'll get ready. Those people who got ready, they will be safe, and they leave. Those people who do not get ready, then they're gonna face the the army. How, or the danger that is coming. The Prophet ﷺ, he, he came as a warner. He came as a warner. He came to warn the people from the punishment of Allah He came to warn the people from the, 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 from the, from the fire that is blazing. And now he came to warn the people from standing in front of the Lord of the worlds. He came to warn the people from the anger of Ar-Rahman. He said, Ana al Uryan. I am the naked warner. And he, whoever does not take the warning from the Messenger ﷺ, then he's going to be destroyed. He cannot fight back. Now he, there, there's no way out for him. He's going to return to Allah Azza wa Jal. He's going to see his deeds. فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ The way out from that is to flee to Allah Azza wa Jal. Now to flee to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the case here. Whenever a person he has khashya, then what does he have? Oh, he has khawf. What does he do? Huh? He tried to get close. He tried to get close. He tried. And whenever he has knowledge, he has khashya. Whenever he has khashya, he has... Ibadah, <laughs> whatever he, and he's further away from disobedience, and he, these are related like this. Now, the knowledge leads to khashya, and khashya leads to ibadah, and ibadah leads to maradatillahi azza wa the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal. Ibadah, what is ibadah? Everything that Allah loves and is pleased with, from speech and from action, from speech and from action. Then, falatak shohum wakshoni, the person who learns about Allah azza wa jal. And he has khashya. What does the khashya do for him? The khashya causes him to leave off everything that would bring the anger of Allah. That's what it means to flee to him. Leave off what causes the anger of Allah. Leave off everything that is, is displeasing to Allah. To leave it off entirely. Now, Ibn Abbas and anhuma, he defined the, the person uh, who, who is knowledgeable. The relationship between knowledge and uh, al khashya And he mentioned uh, Rahimahullah ta'ala إِنَّمَ يَخْشَ اللَّهِ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَةِ إِنَّمَ يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَةِ Those who truly have khashya of Allah Azza wa Jal, they are the, and, uh, from his servants, they are the people of knowledge. Uh, Ibn uh, Abbas, he said, أَلَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Those people who know that Allah has the ability to do all things. These are the ones who fear Allah. The ones they, have, they know without a doubt that Allah, He has the ability to do all things. The one who has this belief in his heart uh, that, that Allah has the ability to do all things. Whenever he leaves his home, will he trust somebody else? Uh, whenever he worships uh, and he makes salat, will he hope for the reward from somebody else? Or the praise from somebody else? Or fear somebody else? La, he knows Allah has the ability to do all things. And this is one of the reasons why Allah created the creation. Now, so that we may know that Allah has the ability to do all things. Allah is the one who created seven heavens and the earth like them. He brings the order between them so that you know that Allah is all powerful and all This person is Adam. The one who acts upon that, he is a person of knowledge. He knows that Allah is the one who has the ability to do all things. When Allah is the one who has the ability to do all things. Likewise, Ibn Abbas and Allah Allah and him, he also mentioned about this verse. And Adam is the one who has the ability Man lam yushrik bihi shay'an. The one who was a true uh, scholar and knowledgeable about Ar Rahman is the one who did not associate any partners with him whatsoever. Not major shirk, not minor shirk. Not in his uh, ri'ah, not in his sum'ah, not in uh, shirk al akbar, not asgar, not khafi, not jali. He didn't make any partners with Allah whatsoever. Wa hal halalahu wa harrama haramahu. And he also followed the halal of Allah Azza wa Jal and he also left off the haram, uh, that which is impermissible. 
وَمُحَاسَبٌ بِعَمَلِهِ And he has certainty that he will meet him and he, he, he maintained and preserved the command of Allah Azza wa Jal and he has certainty that he will meet him and that he will be held accountable for his deeds. This person, and he, according to Ibn Abbas, he is Adam. Rahman, the one who is the true scholar and knowledgeable with regards to Allah Azza wa Jal, Ar-Rahman, he's the one who, 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 who knows him by his commandments and prohibitions. And he knows him and he worships him alone. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he stays inside the limits of Allah Azza wa Jal, and he knows that he will meet him. And he knows that he will be held accountable. And this manner, a person, this is true khashya. The khashya, if it enters the heart, it will, it will force a person to leave off the sins. It will force a person to leave off the sins and to get ready to meet the one who he is afraid of. If he truly has khashya, he truly has fear and, and awe and reverence of Allah Azza wa in his heart, that will cause him to get ready to meet the one he fears. Not to meet him. Not to meet him. Ilallah. they mentioned about this al firar Ilallah Azza wa Jal, that this is actually, uh, uh, it's also called Al Hijrah. Al Hijrah. What is Hijrah? Many times when people think about Hijrah, they only think of one type of Hijrah. Al Intiqal min Baladi al Shirki ila Balad al Islam. To leave the land of Shirk to go to the land of Islam. That this is a Hijrah bil Abdan. This is making hijrah migration with the with the bodies, but there and this is not incumbent upon everybody at every time. Now this is only incumbent or obligatory upon certain people in certain circumstances. Now, but as for the other type of hijrah, which is hijrah to al qulub, the hijrah of the hearts, this one is incumbent and obligatory upon the servants at all times, and this is called also the firar in Allah Azza wa Jal. And just like the hijrah of the body, it requires a place that one makes hijrah from, or something he leaves off and then he goes to. Likewise, the hijrah of the heart, the migration of the heart, there's something that must be left off, and something that must be migrated to. What are the, what, what is... Uh-huh. The, um, there's all the obligatory actions, and stay away from all the... Uh-huh. He makes hijrah from everything that is displeasing to Allah. He makes, he makes hijrah and leaves off everything that is displeasing to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He makes hijrah from everything that is impermissible and with speech and action. And He makes hijrah from that to everything that Allah loves and is pleased with. Everything that Allah loves and is pleased with. This is called al-hijrah. This is the, this is the true hijrah. And now that's incumbent at all times. Sometimes if a person he is not aware or he is not... If he falls into heedlessness, then he will find that his heart loves something and is attached to something that is not pleasing to Allah. His heart will love it and want it. Now his heart will be, even sometimes it becomes firm upon something that Allah does not like. Uh, the one who, who, who remembers and he wakes up from his heedlessness, then he will remember Allah and His greatness. Uh, and if he has that reverence in his heart and that fear, uh, then he will leave off that thing. And he will go to that which Allah loves. And he will migrate with his heart and his body to that which Allah loves from speech. If he was saying the speech that's not pleasing to Allah, he will leave that. Make migration, make hijrah, get rid of that. And go to that which is pleasing to Allah. This meaning has been established on the, in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, Al-Muhajir, man hajra ma nahallahu anhu. Al-Muhajir, yani Al-Muhajir haqqan. That's the meaning. The true migrator, the true person who made hijrah is the one who left off that which Allah has made impermissible. That which Allah has made impermissible. This is the true hijrah. To leave off, to make hijrah. Not from the land, one land to another land, but to leave off that which is haram and impermissible. To make hijrah from that. And to leave that off and to go that, to that which is permissible and that which is allowed. This is the true hijrah that's incumbent upon everybody at all times. This is uh, something that we're all held accountable for. Not just some people in some lands or some places, but rather the hijrah from the haram and that which is impermissible and the hijrah from the anger uh, of Allah and the actions and statements that anger Allah Azza wa Jal to His mercy and to His pleasure and to that which He has allowed for us and that which He is pleased with and that which He has, loves and made permissible. Al hijrah ilallahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al firar ilallahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. The author after this he mentioned another uh, evidence. He says, "Wa dalilul inabati qawluhu ta'ala wa anibu ila rabbikum wa aslimu lahu." 
وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلموا له الدليل ودليل الإنابة الإنابة in the language it means a رجوع أنابة يعني بمعنى رجع that he returned but الإنابة here is similar to توبة التوبة also means the رجوع and he رجوع على الذنب that he would turn return uh, after have being in the wrong land and يعني being uh, attached to sins whenever he migrates from those sins what does he do he repents from them and he leaves them and he returns back to the obedience of Allah azza wa jalla and he returns back to that which is pleasing to Allah azza wa jalla this is called tauba if a person he does that after making tauba and then he increases in good and striving and obedience and devotion to Allah this is a higher rank of tauba it's called al inaba هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم